Get your popcorn ready. Here come the Facebook drama. Mary gets it. Hello, welcome to episode five of Mary Gets It. I'm Mary Pasco. With me, as always, is Bruce. And wow, Facebook <laughs> is blowing up with some drama. As usual. Am I right? Am I right? Oh my gosh. It's like you have to <laughs> like you have to just expect it at this point. <laughs> you can't say anything without someone getting mad and blowing it out of proportion. So here's what's happening this week. <laughs> my awesome friend Chris Putro. Hi Chris. Love you is the host of the Crispy Comedy Show, which I will be back at on Monday, September 17th at 11.30 p.m., The Light Show. <laughs> and that's at Universal Bar and Grill on Lancashire in North Hollywood. So Chris posted, you know, he was a... Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if Chris's posts are public to the world so I don't want to just like read his post just in case but basically the main point that I got from it is that people have not been respecting him and his generosity in giving us stage time in fact one particular person did a no a no show no call no show as they say in the biz, <laughs> the restaurant biz, <laughs> I don't know, a no call, no show. N and she never apologized to him, never explained. And, you know, that's not cool. That's not professional. That is not nice. And she actually ended up commenting on the post as if like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, there was a lot going on on this post. And since Chris had mentioned something about, like, that someone um, thinks more women should be booked on comedy shows, but then, like, at the same time, she was offered a spot on his show and didn't even respond to him. So there's there's a lot going on there there's a lot to unpack and a lot of people just jumped right on the fact that he was talking about women which you know what I I'm a feminist which just for the record only means that we believe that we should all be equal regardless of our gender I kind of feel like that's a normal feeling but it's really making me feel annoyed that so many people don't even want you to talk about women are this men are this anymore yes gender is a fluid spectrum it's neither mutually exclusive nor collectively exhaustive we get it at the same time I personally see a lot of differences between men and women Men and women are different. I say this to Ryan, and he even doesn't. He's just kind of like, well, people are people. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to put you on blast, Ryan. <laughs> but it's it's true, and it has nothing to do with biology. It's more of, like, how you identify. And if you identify as female, there are certain traits that might just naturally go with that not always of course there's a lot of things that I do that are you know generally more of like a male thing I, I don't know I have like some male energy <laughs> which is fine with me I'm totally okay with it but I can also be extremely quote-unquote girly and I'm okay with that too as some people say, we're all in drag. <laughs> wow, we, we just got right into it on this episode. Shoot, I guess I have a lot to say about this. I did major in women's studies at Wellesley, and I 
I was like all over all this like gender identity and gendered interactions, how it it changes the way that we speak to someone based on what their perceived gender is. And uh, yeah, so I have a lot to say about it. And so did the people on Facebook. <laughs> Poor Chris. Like, I mean, I'm sure he expected this. It's just how it is now. It's 2018. And people are extremely sensitive to everything, it seems. Not everybody. Y you're probably not. <laughs> but a lot of people are. And that is kind of a theme on Mary Gets It here where I am trying to figure out what can I say? I wish, I wish I could be that fearless comedian who just says anything without even caring. That's my dream. Ugh. And, you know, when I am doing improv, I actually, uh, I'm going to be leaving for my improv rehearsal in a little bit here right after and when I am doing improv I can't be thinking about that stuff I kind of just have to go with it that's the whole thing about improv you don't think that movie don't think twice is amazing by the way I freaking love it oh Mike Berbiglia is awesome hey okay you can't think in improv so I have to just rely on myself to kind of instinctually know that you know some things are gonna go over well with the crowd and some things I don't know people are gonna get mad but the point is I feel like men and women are different we're alike in a lot of ways we're different in a lot of ways and it's okay for me to say that I saw someone on Facebook was, I, I believe it was a female comedian, and she was making a joke about men, which is what we do. <laughs> and Facebook said she couldn't say it because I wish I could remember who it was so I could give you credit for this. If you're listening, please reach out to me so I can give you credit. It's so super messed up. I kind of want to say it was Amanda Jane. I could be wrong. It was so messed up, like she got in Facebook jail over it, if I'm remembering correctly, and I hope I am. I mean, we should, we're comedians, and even non-comedians. I feel like, what happened to freedom of speech? Facebook is, like, really overly policing at this point, in my opinion. Jeez, I don't think I need to even say in my opinion, because this is an opinion podcast. It's like when you're writing an op-ed for a newspaper. You don't have to keep saying in my opinion. I'm just, now I'm policing myself. <laughs> you know it's my opinion. And I'm sure someday, we're only five episodes in, and it's, it's going to come quickly, and it's going to be rough. People are going to get mad about some things that I'm saying on the show. I just know it, because I've been there. It's happened. I got kicked off YouTube years ago. Still don't know why. But... I hope I don't get kicked off again. I better knock on wood on that one. <laughs> so, yeah, Bruce is here telling me it's going to be okay. And, hey, we're going to get through this together. You and me and Bruce. Chris Poocher. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really jump down his throat like, um, why do you have to make this about women? And Like, it, you know, it's his opinion, it's his experience, and there's freedom of speech. So let's just, well, at this point, all we can really do is just sit back and eat the popcorn and read the comments. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <sighs> but you know what? It's going to be a great show on Monday at Crispy Comedy going to be like a therapy a group therapy session for all of us we we're gonna blow off some steam I hope you can come I know you know if if it's really far away or if you have to work early in the morning it's tough but 
I do really enjoy when I get to hang out with you. And we're hanging out right now, and it's awesome. I was just at the post office, and I came back, and I was parking my Jeep on this one-way street nearby. And (laughs) it's like all parallel parking here. This is Hollywood. I don't have a parking spot at my place, which is cool. I always find a spot somewhere. And I saw in the rearview mirror that there was a car all the way, like, a block away. And I was like, yeah, I can I can get in this spot real quick. Sometimes I'm really good at parallel parking. Sometimes not so much. <laughs> this time I was good. I, I got it. And they literally only had to wait three to seven seconds for me just to get out of their way getting into the spot. It was a one-way street, so they weren't going to get around me even if I had, like, waited for them to go. Like, you know, if it's a bigger street, you can kind of, like, wave them around to indicate that you're going to be parallel parking. But this was just a super-duper narrow street where they wouldn't have been able to do that. And I was super quick, and I did a great job, and I was all proud of myself. And they revved their engine as soon as they could get by me, which is the most passive-aggressive thing you can do in a car. (laughs) And people do it all the time. It's like, oh, my gosh, like, you had to wait three to seven seconds. Oh, you poor thing. Like... (laughs) Okay, I know you had to wait. I waved at you. I Like, that's my way of, like, thanking you for waiting for me. You don't have to rev up your engine and speed, like, like a speed demon around me, like, to, to let me know that I was holding you up. But people do that all the time, and it's just like, geez, okay. Sorry, I guess, but I'm not. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. But I'm not really that sorry because I had to park my car now if it's a really busy street and there's just too many cars coming and I see a great spot I'm not gonna wait and hold up the line I'm just gonna go but like this was you know 4 50 p.m and you know it's not I I can't imagine that anyone is in that big of a hurry that they can't wait three to seven seconds no one should ever be in that big of a hurry to go anywhere unless you're racing for the toilet or if it's you know some kind of like medical emergency but if you're just going to work either wake up a little bit earlier Like me, when I'm going to work, especially if I'm going to be going to work on like a TV show, especially if I've never been to that set before and I don't know how exactly how far away it is, how long it's going to take. I get there like hours early sometimes. Just get just plan ahead better and get to where you want to go super early and then play on your phone or meditate in the car. Until it's time to go in. By the way, there have been so many times when I've been meditating in my car and people (laughs) like try to talk to me like I'm usually wearing my sunglasses so I don't think they can tell that I have my eyes closed and they're like waving at me or like trying to talk to me and then they um, sometimes will like tell me later if I'm getting ready to go into the restaurant or something. And they're like, I saw you in your car, but I don't know what you were doing. You were just like staring straight ahead. I'm like, I was meditating and I had my eyes closed. (laughs) So I want to invent some kind of cool sunglasses that say like, I'm meditating. Leave me alone or something. (laughs) Maybe something nicer than that. (laughs) That's probably already been invented. and Maybe I should just buy those. But if they haven't been invented, then I'm going to make them. 
and they're going to be very helpful. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, no one should ever be in that big of a hurry. I actually feel like, you know how when you see valet drivers and they're, by the way, I think it's got to be one of the hardest jobs out there. I can't, I, I could definitely not be a valet driver. My awesome friend Carla is a valet driver and I'm just like, I don't know how you do it. That's amazing. <laughs> like, wow. I, I couldn't do it for so many reasons. <laughs> First of all, I'm not really all that great at driving, uh, I, I'm great on my, with my Jeep because it's up high. I have great visibility, but anytime I'm driving like a lower car, I, I kind of just feel worried because I can't really like see everything, you know, but if you're a valet driver, you have to be able to drive anything. And also I am horrible at stick shift. <laughs> my dad tried to teach me and my friend Melissa tried to teach me, and uh, maybe if I revisit it now that I'm older, I might be able to get it. But when I was young, I I just, it was, I didn't get it. <laughs> but maybe I'll try again. But yeah, the valet drivers that I see around Hollywood are always running to go get a vehicle. And I just don't think that, any kind of job, like a customer service type job, I don't think that you should ever have to run. I don't, I hate it when the restaurant is so busy that I feel like I need to run. But you know you can't because it's a restaurant and it's like a swimming pool. You can't run around a swimming pool. It would be dangerous. You cannot be running around a restaurant where people are holding trays full of drinks. There's plates of hot food. It's terrifying, by the way, when there are small children just running around a restaurant. And, you know, I have I have had children like run into my legs when I'm holding a tray full of drinks or like heavy plates of hot food. And that would be terrible. Anything could go wrong there. But yeah, I don't think that any kind of job should involve running unless it's like an athlete, you know, <laughs> or I guess, um, well, I, from what I've seen on Grey's Anatomy, you know, they have to run in a hospital, but, hmm, actually, now that I think about that, I'm, I'm going to ask, I have, my sister Liz is a nurse and Ryan's mom is also a nurse. So I'm going to ask them like, if they really do run like in, I mean, I feel like they do, right? I don't know. Hmm. Because, yeah, life or death situations, you probably have to run. <laughs> but getting a, going and picking up someone's car, I don't think that you should have to run. I, If I were having a valet driver go pick up my car, I would... I wouldn't want them to feel like they needed to run. <laughs> I would want them. It's like those, the people who call in the Postmates orders and they're like rushing, rushing, rushing through. It's like, hey, you know what? If you take your time, maybe we won't make any mistakes. <laughs> That's the key. Accuracy over speed. That's what Ryan always says. <laughs> I think he learned that when he was working at Starbucks or something. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> I'm also finding the line between, you know, talking about Ryan enough and too much. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to bore you guys, but I also want to give him props. Because he's awesome. Hey, you know what? I think it's time for... Bruce's Corner. Oh, hello, Bruce. Hello. How do you do? Um, yeah, I'm doing great. And I just wanted to say, you can talk about Ryan as much as you want because he's a really good dad to me. He's a really sweet guy. And 
He gives me food a lot, and um, yeah, so that's great. Also, I want to say a uh, shout out to the listeners and viewers, and yeah, I just want to uh, like rub my head against you because I love you. This is Ben Bruce's corner. Bruce's corner. Great job, Bruce. That was lovely. Wow. She's a star. A star is born. <laughs> I don't know if I told you this before, but when I was talking to my mom about Mary Gets It, she was like, maybe Bruce will get her own following. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> my little Bruce, I'm so proud of you. Bruce has a lot of health issues. She's epileptic. And we we have really, you know, a strong team of vets and everyone who works there. <laughs> so we're, we're getting through, but we'll talk more about that as the show progresses. She's doing great today, and that's wonderful. She's a very tough girl. I'm super proud of her. Okay. You know what? Let's get real. It's time for Let's Get Real. I feel like we've actually been getting real, like, from the top of the show. But I, I wanted to share with you this this idea, I, I've heard other people mention it a little bit here and there, but my sister Liz and I came up with this when we were uh, very young, maybe like middle school, high school. We noticed that, well, we noticed it first with guys. Oh, no, she's going to talk about guys? <laughs> Just kidding. We noticed it about guys, the ones who seemed like jerks turned out to actually be really sweet guys and the guys who seemed really nice actually ended up being super jerks and so we would say that like everything's opposite it's weird and you'll start to notice it now that we're talking about it it's like I don't know like guys alpha guys like if you're a true alpha person, females included, you don't, you're pretty chilled back actually because you're super confident in yourself. You don't feel the need to act, you know, like you're the alpha because you already know in your soul that you got this. You're, you're running the show. You're on the scene. The people who are like, overdoing it and trying really hard to act like they're in control are not in control. And I think we are starting to know that and see that more and more as time goes on. <laughs> it's funny, like, everything is opposite. I, all right, since we're getting real, I've read a lot of dating self-help books and articles. Hey, I like to read. I like to be informed. And I like to be in a nice, healthy relationship. Thank God I finally am in a nice, healthy relationship because I've been in quite a few unhealthy ones and I have been, you know, in the wrong so many times. And I know that now. And I probably knew that then, but I just just ugh, didn't know what to do <laughs> about it. But I remember in one book, I don't remember exactly which one, it said something about how, like, when men are complaining about their woman, like, oh, she won't let me do this, it's actually, like, they're kind of bragging that they have a woman who cares so much. And I think that's so cute. So everything is opposite. 
and we're going to definitely continue the discussion as far as that whole idea goes on future episodes. And if you've noticed something like that, I would love to hear about it. Tweet me anything that you want to tell me about at Mary Gets It Pod or at Mary Pasco, M A R Y P A S C O E. This has been a really fun episode, as always. We talked about a lot of stuff, and I would love to improvise a song with you about all this goodness. I have Bruce in my lap here, <laughs> where she belongs. I'm trying to reach my sustain pedal for my keyboard so that I can make it sound extra beautiful for you. So, thank you so much for being my friend and Bruce's friend. Hey, hey, hey. car you do not want to add to the stress of your valet's job actually you know what I read somewhere that it's pronounced valet but that couldn't be it I don't know for sure cause I hear everybody say valet hey hey if you're in a big big hurry it better be because you have to pee especially if you're in LA cause baby come on we have traffic all day Facebook drama Get the popcorn Get the popcorn Cause someone's about to learn today Yeah, yeah, yeah Turn off the notifications Turn off the notifications Otherwise, you're just gonna have to keep on being reminded that everybody is mad at you because you said something about a dude. And someone took offense and said, um, they're men, not dudes, okay? I can't even believe that you would call them dudes. That actually happened to me once. A bunch of people from Wellesley got mad at me for calling men dudes. Ooh. I'm not even going to pretend to apologize for that one. Come on, come on. Let's just all have some fun and relax. It's free speech, okay? <laughs> Facebook, let it go. This is just some thing we do for fun and we post memes and stuff. So stop taking yourself so seriously. Everybody.
Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you. Bruce loves you. And we will see you soon. Bye. <laughs>